music, one of the most beautiful art forms in the world. Many of the finest pieces from history get played by the most skilled musicians with extravagant instruments and unmatched levels of finesse, such as the piano, the violin, and whatever this is. This is a music box. It has a range of three octaves and can be programmed to play a song. There is no microprocessor, just digital logic, a ROM chip, and some timer. Here's how I built it. The music box produces different notes with the help of our good old friend, the 555 timer. This little chip is used to make a square wave by repeatedly charging and discharging a capacitor. And the frequency at which this happens is controlled by both the capacitance and the resistors that limit current going into and out of it. If we connect the speaker to the output, we get a tone of said frequency. We can then have 12 different resistors, each of which are tuned to a note on the chromatic scale. We can then choose a note by connecting one of those resistors to the 555 timer. So there's one octave, but that isn't a lot. We can add another set of 12 resistors, but there's a cheeky little trick we can use instead. We can move up or down an octave by multiplying or dividing the frequency by 2, and judging by the formula that the 555 timer datasheet gives, that is most easily done by changing the capacitor. We can double the capacitance by adding an identical capacitor in parallel, and half the capacitance by adding one in series. The circuit has three capacitors and a few transistors. The transistors act as current controlled switches, which determine which capacitors are connected to the timer. One is always connected, and one of two capacitors can be added to it, one in series to go up an octave, and the other in parallel to go down an octave. From there we can use a bunch of digital logic to control which notes on which octaves come out. Now what makes this go from the world's worst synthesizer to the world's worst music box is an electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, or EEPROM for short. An EEPROM has an address bus and a data bus, and with every input at the address bus, the data bus outputs whatever data value was programmed at that address. So to the address bus, I hooked up a bunch of counters, so it can cycle through each note sequentially. You know, like reading music. That leaves the question of how to store notes on the data bus. Between the resistors, capacitors, and some other things, there are 17 total input wires, but only 8 wires on the data bus. However, since we're only supposed to select one capacitor and one resistor at a time, this can be reduced. If we were to numerically label each wire in one of these groups starting from zero, we can have something that takes in a binary number and turns on the input corresponding to that wire. This allows us to use n wires to represent two to the n inputs. This is a D coder, you fucking clown. Um, yeah, that is a thing, and it's called a decoder. I have a 2 to 4 decoder connected to the three transistors that control the capacitors. As for the 12 resistors, I'm using the 74HC4067, which is a 4 to 16 decoder with a transistor on each output, effectively allowing one resistor at a time to pass through it. These decoders mean the resistors and capacitors only take up six wires on the data bus leaving the 7th and 8th wires on the data bus for a mute and end marker respectively. The mute marker is simple, just turn off the speaker with a transistor. Using an SR latch, we can enable counters with the push of a button that starts playback and then disable the counters at the end of the song using the end marker. The 8 wires form the data bus of the EEPROM, and using this we can write out a song in a hex editor and load it to the EEPROM. Mm, it's an now I can just write songs like that, but I am a professional. So I need a professional way to program songs. Thus begins the second piece of this project, programming the music box. While there is a well-established way of storing pitches, there's no real way to store lengths. But the solution is pretty straightforward. Express the length in terms of clock cycles of the counter, which I will refer to from here on as ticks. The base lengths are 3 ticks for 16th notes, 6 ticks for 8th notes, 12 ticks for quarter notes, and so forth. From there, these lengths can have modifiers. Triplet multiplies the length by 2 thirds, and dotted multiplies by 3 halves. The final length is how many addresses the note is repeated for in the EEPROM, but the staccato modifier can change the last tick into a rest to make a gap between two adjacent notes. Then I devised a way to write notes with their lengths in a text file, and wrote a C++ program to generate a binary file using the convention for the data bus. From there, you just take an EEPROM program of your choice and, uh, yeah, just yoss it onto an EEPROM. And if all is done right, you should get...
So yeah, I don't know how to end this video. Goodbye.